Oh, I remember what I did. Jesus Christ. I did fun factory. Oh, that was awful. That was really, really, really awful. I actually joined Granada in April 1979, and I arrived in Manchester, wet behind the ears, and I have to say, I had absolutely no idea what was entailed. And I didn't for quite a while. It was an intense culture shock to come from London to Manchester. I had no idea. didn't really grasp what was involved in working television until about six months in, and I was very lucky to scrape through my probationary period. Martin, uh... I know it's no business of mine, but you're supposed to take the paper off and then eat it. Really? Yeah. I don't know why I bother. Fun Factory was a follow-up to Mersey Pirates. It was a Saturday morning kids' program. And you remember how awful Mersey Park was because Mersey Park was on a boat and you were watching it on a Saturday morning. I used to drink that so I knew you'd be hungover. And then you're watching this stuff on the screen that's going up and down. And it was a complete disaster. It was awful, awful, awful. Where's that burning coming from? Buckler! Buckler! Come here! Here whenever you want me, sir. Can you smell burning? Sir, I can smell burning, sir. Mm. It's not me, sir. It's not my socks, neither, sir, because I took them off this week, sir, and gave them a burial at sea, sir. Billy, I don't want to hear about your sweaty socks at this point. We've got to find out where that burning's coming from. You're going to have a look aft. After where, sir? The blunt end of the ship. And, I'll and Fun Track Factory was the fundamentally <laughs> misconceived follow-up. And good morning and welcome once again to the Fun Factory. My name is Billy Butler, one of the most loved characters on television, and I'm the boss here at the Fun Factory. He was live in one of those big warehouses at the back. What was the road that went across the bottom from Key Street, parallel to the airway? And who else was on it? Martin Bloody Day. Jesus. God, he was awful too. Billy, I've got to speak to you urgently. We've got this terrible problem in the factory, and everything's going wrong around here. And Martin Day, he's a, our, our job man. We call him Disaster Day. Is it about work? Yes, of course it's about work. So if... Sorry, Martin. And um, we all had to wear yellow border suits in case we got in shot. I mean, and this was the whole period in Granada. Everybody wearing pestles and rainbow badges, and it was like sort of playtime. And the clothes were like going back to the bloody nursery half the time. All the PAs used to wear border suits and rainbow badges, and it was all very. Interesting. You see, when you take the correct precautions, everything goes okay. That was the amazing slipping on a bed of banana skin trick. And later on in the show, I'll be showing you some other wonderful practical jokes. We come to the part of the show where we phone and make sure that everybody in the world is watching Fun Factory. I'm going to phone up one of our viewers in Scotland, and we're going to see whether they're listening and whether they're viewing. If they are, I'm going to ask them a simple question, and they could win a Fun Factory T-shirt. Actually, we did... Uh... It was... And I was sort of being punished for something. I wasn't quite sure what. Producer Sandy Ross, he and I got on absolutely dreadfully. We couldn't stand each other. They didn't say which word it was, but they and it was just a slow motion car crash for about six months. It's somewhere in Scotland. So if you're in Scotland watching the Fun Factory and your phone rings, this could be your chance to win a Fun Factory t shirt. Right, somewhere in Scotland the phone is going to ring, and if it's answered, then the winner could be. Ah! So all lines for Scotland are engaged. Please try again later. So there we are. Unfortunately, the lines for Scotland are engaged, and we will try again in about nine months' time. Don't forget. I laugh about it now, but it was so grim. Doctor, doctor, I'm going blind. Have your eyes been checked? No, they've always been blue. Doctor, doctor, I feel like a pair of curtains. Pull yourself together, man. Doctor, doctor, I feel like scratch record, scratch record, scratch record. Anyway, I've been asked to introduce the next award winners, who are in fact uh, the best quiz show on television, darlings, and the winners of Generation Game. And so here's Larry Grayson and Scylla Black. Thank you, darlings. <laughs> Hello, 
Wait, what could I say? That's a Dutch racket thing now a bottle of tomato sauce. Don't you get saucy with me. Doctor, doctor, I've swallowed a bomb and it's going to go off in a few seconds. Wait a minute. Doctor, doctor, I keep up, I keep up thinking I'm a button. Sew yourself together, girl. No, this is the magic dice box. Hang, hang on a minute, hang on. Ah, that's better. It's cooler in the shade. Cooler in the shade. Cooler in the shade. Oh, right. So, you don't scare me. I've died before. Doctor, Doctor, I feel like a snooker ball. Get to the back of the queue. Doctor, Doctor, I keep on thinking I'll pack of cards. Get to the back of the queue and I'll deal with you later. Doctor, Doctor, please can you help me out? Certainly. Which way did you come in? Every day. It's a getting closer. I keep on losing my memory. When did it happen? When did what happen? Doctor, Doctor, I keep thinking my car's a bed. Go home and sleep on it. Doctor, Doctor, what's the best thing for that burn? Have you tried fire extinguisher? How did you come to win the Miss Julie Great Britain? Well, what you had to do is you had to send a photograph into the Daily Star and then they'd um, pick a final 15 and then the final 15 had to go to Morecambe. Doctor, Doctor, every time I have a drink of tea, I get a stabbing pain in my eye. Have you tried taking the spoon out? Doctor, Doctor, my mum keeps thinking she's an orange. Where is she now? She's round the corner playing squash. Doctor, Doctor, I feel like a bird. Stand over there and stop twittering. Doctor, Doctor, I feel like a bridge. What well, has come over you? Four cars, three lorries and five buses. Doctor, Doctor, I feel like a spoon. Stand over there and don't stir. Oh, I don't have to stand there. Well, that was the St George's Junior School. Well done to all of you. How do you actually remember all those jokes? It's easy. Just, uh, you just say them a lot of times. We've been rehearsed about seven billion times. It looked time. marvellous. Can you do lots of other jokes as well? Yes. Yeah, I can do impressions. All right. Well, I know you're in a hurry now to return to morning surgery, so thanks all of you very much for coming along. And uh, let's find out what's happening elsewhere, eh? To be on, to be my There you go there, look, you know. Cliff Richards, boring, ageing, close friend, B.A. Robertson. All right, hello, good um, pop kids. A jolly good morning to you all, one and all, yeah? I hope you're all sort of like... We had the first VJ we had. This is, a, this is, a, this is going to show you what a disaster it was. The first v VJ we had was someone called Gary Crowley, who I knew from London, who I talked to get up. And he was a kind of mod guy. And he had this friend called Vaughan Toulouse who came up once. And Vaughan, who's now dead, um, was later in a band called The Pump and Dice, who had, had a hit single, uh, called His Vic there. Anyway, Gary turned up with Vaughan once, and he's my mate, and Vaughan was sort of dressed a bit like Clockwork Orange, because that was his mood for the day. Now, Vaughan, um, is it true that the Guns for Hire have sold out to the enterprising world of punk? Bollocks, Mike. <laughs> Oh, God, there you go. That's what Vaughan has to say about that. Switchboard jammed. Sandy Ross rushing around. John, you're responsible for this. What are you doing? And Gary Crowley got sacked from the show. Well, my goodness me. Have you thought that was funny? And we didn't. Why not take a look at this? And guess who replaced him? Thank you, Granada. Ray Tirrett. <laughs> Mr. Turret, what do you have to say to the victims? Was Jimmy Savile party to any of the crimes, Mr. Turret? He was the man who fixed it for Jim. As a friend and flatmate, Ray Turret knew Jimmy Savile as well as anyone. He shared his secrets and his predatory behaviour towards young girls. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Helen! Happy birthday Thank today! You, yes. There was a whole creepy no, side to, to everything. To and everything. that's what I hated about light entertainment, because I knew that light entertainment was a lie. Mm. Do well, because you're a lovely lady. 
Thank you very Happy much. Happy birthday to Helen. Happy <laughs> birthday to <laughs> Helen. You can't sing now. Happy birthday, dear Helen. Happy birthday to much. Incredible. Round of applause for a lovely lady. Beautiful. Oh, just you to get in on the act. I knew it was a dirty rotten lie, and Terry was creepy. And in retrospect, he was let loose from an audience of teenagers. And um, he actually said the immortal thing, which was, he introduced the video for Love Will Tear Us Apart by Joy, Div by Joy Division. Ian just killed himself. So a question. Yeah. What do you think of Joy Division? Joy Division, my favourite female vocalist, Ray. Joy Division is not a female vocalist, it's a band. I think it's... <laughs> Oh, God. Number 14 in the charts they are now. Up and going well. Joy Division. Wow. Right, there's, there's our number. Now, let's see if we can get an answer down there in Northampton. Now, if you're watching the telly and your phone starts to ring now, it could be me. Yeah, it's ringing out. Of course, if the phone isn't answered, I do not appear in the slightest bit embarrassed because being the boss of the factory, I'm used to any mishap. In fact, probably the person who's watching the show now uh, is too enwrapped watching me on the screen and can't drag themselves away to answer the phone. So, there you are, the unfortunate person who didn't answer the phone... I'm on the phone now! Oh, hello, Freddy! Yes? Uh, are you watching the Fun Factory? No! You're not? No! Well, how do you know I'm on the phone to you? I don't know, I'm me! Well, would you like to and then, so we had Ray Terrace, and then one week we had um, Freddie Starr. You're mad. I'm mad. You're mad. I'm mad. You're mad. Am I mad? Yes, you're mad. I want some music played in this place. Anyway, sorry, give Fred, no, sorry, not playing your record. How are you going to make me play your record? I've got ways of making you play my record, mate. How can you make me play your record, Freddie? Easy. How? Do you like raspberries? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, while I'm enjoying this beautiful bowl of raspberries, it's with great pleasure now I take it over to the Fun Factory notice board to see what's happening. So you can imagine what that was like. He was taking his cock out behind the camera and waggling it at the presenters while they were doing live links. Why didn't you try the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield where you can have a kids Theatre Festival, and that starts uh, for a month, starting uh, on Monday in the main theatre. Or in London, they've got the extraordinary paperback. <laughs> the paperback theatre. Martin government. can't cope with Freddie Starr. You remember the Frisbee Championships we did last week? Well, as you would expect from an idea I thought of, they swept the nation. And later today and tomorrow, you can go to the European Frisbee Championships at Richmond Athletic Ground. Everything I do will be fucking from now on. And then we had Dex's Midnight Runners on one week. And their idea of fun was to grab every kid in sight and say, every time you see a red light, just run in front of the camera and say, Karl Marx rules. So the whole way to the programme was kids running, Karl Marx rules, Karl Marx rules. <laughs> it was a nightmare. And here's another nice one. The Bullfighter by Matador, sent in by Claire Fitch of Solihull. If you've got any ideas Karl for... Karl Marx was OK. Who? Karl Marx. Karl Marx is OK. Yeah. Terrific stuff. Well, little sensation. Uh, and <laughs> that was what I was doing in 1980. Hey, what are you three doing here? Ah! Hello, Gordon, you long drawn out Kermit the Frog. Billy. You second hand penalty taker. You Billy. fourth in the ratings poser. Billy, you know who you're talking to? Yes, that's Gordon Burns. Yeah, that's right. Yes, off the Krypton Factor. Yes, yes. Well, I'm just doing the Krypton Factor insult course. Billy, it's the Krypton Factor assault course. You think I didn't know it was a Krypton Factor assault course? Well, if you're so clever, answer this question from the general knowledge section. When was the Great Fire of London? Pass. It's 1666. No, Gordon, it's 1134. <laughs> right, so I'll give you one from the Fun Factory Intelligence Test. Where is the Great Wall of China? Oh, that's got that's, him. It's a difficult one to solve. Oh, well, I'll need a bit of time to think about that. 
Right. There's no need to be like that, Gordon, just because you don't know the answer. Well, I need time to think, so you run down the course and that should give me a couple of weeks.